Welcome back to the Boot Tragedies. And in the second round, I didn't stay up for this last night. Uh, didn't post a video, but the Pels did select EJ Liddell, power forward out of Ohio State. Now, before we even get going on this, I do want to say this guy should have been a first round pick. I honestly thought he would have uh, went first round, but the NBA is weird like that, man. If you're not an 18, 19 year old guy, they will rarely select you in the first round just because that's just what they like to do. They like to draft off of potential, and I understand that in a, uh, to a certain extent. But this guy could have and should have been a first round pick, but I'm super, super glad he fell to the Pelicans. I'll just give you a prime example real quick. Jose Alvarado, uh, he was a four-year player at Georgia Tech, uh, spent four years there. He came into the league NBA-ready, honestly. What what he was is, is what he was going to give you, a defensive guy, guy that was going to compete. Did that right when he entered the league. You got Herb Jones, same way, four-year guy at Alabama, man. Didn't put up monstrous numbers, but was a great defender, was NBA-ready. Already had not, not a grown man body, but body was already... Uh, was already ready for the physical demands that the NBA brings. So just having guys that are older sometimes helps you. Because look at the playoffs, man. Uh, we had a couple 18-year-olds out there. It wouldn't have went as well as um, having Jose Alvarado and Herb Jones out there. Also, can't forget about Trey Murphy. He was also a three-year guy in college. So, man, just having those older guys kind of later in the draft, late first round, early second round does really help your team in the long run. Those guys are ready to compete right away, usually more you know, more often than those 18-year-olds. Obviously, you have sometimes where 18-year-olds just super, super dominant, and he's just that guy. But the age thing does not deter me from drafting guys, man. The best player needs to be drafted, and I think the Pels did that with EJ Liddell. And let's just kind of talk about his time at Ohio State. This guy was absolutely amazing at Ohio State. Let's just go through his three years points per game wise. First year, averaged 6.7 uh, points per game. Next year, 16.2 points per game. And this past season, 19.4 points per game. That guy improved every year. The rebound category averaged 3.8 rebounds a game, 6.7, then 7.9. Assists also went up from 0 0.5 to 1.8 to 2.5. The guy got better. The blocks per game. 0 0.9, 1.1 to 2.6. The guy was getting better every single season, and he did show that he can shoot the three ball. This was going to be the most important thing for him. He only took about one and a half a game, but he shot 37% from the three-point line. That definitely helped his draft stock. Um, his freshman year shot 19% to 34% to 37%. So, obviously, he's showing constant improvement in that three-point shot. He's only 6'7". He kind of plays like a big... I don't know what this will mean for the uh, Pelicans players like Jackson Hayes. He kind of, for me, is uh, you know threatening that spot for him. Jackson Hayes' contract is coming up soon, so the Pels may not be able to to keep him um, financially, and he may want to just uh you know have a bigger role somewhere else. The Pels may trade him. Who knows what's going to happen on that front? But EJ Liddell is a very very good player. The Pelicans will have to make a roster spot for him because right now they don't even have a roster spot. This team was so good, which is a good thing and a bad thing. They just were so good last year that it's no one that they can really kick off the team. But man, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, that will have to happen somewhere down the line. The Pelicans will have to make a choice. Do they want to give him a two-way contract, which I'm sure he doesn't want to accept? He's he's definitely deserving of an NBA roster spot. Well, I won't say deserving. Nobody's deserving of anything. You have to earn that. But this guy is really, really good. He has some potential. And I'm excited to see him play for the Pelicans. Uh, I can't wait for Summer League. Summer League team is going to be really, really good. And I do want to touch on the last guy that they drafted. He won't be playing in the NBA. He's going to play overseas this next season. But the Pelicans did draft Carlo Matkovich. I think I'm saying that correctly. He's a 21-year-old guy. He's going to stay overseas for one or two more seasons. Kind of a drafting stash guy. 6'10". Uh, big man, athletic, springy, bouncy, all of those things can uh, you know really run uh, from in to end on the court. So we'll see what he turns out uh, into. He'll he'll definitely play in summer league. He's going to play overseas for a couple years, and maybe he'll be a player in a couple years. Who knows? But it's a nice drafting stash guy. The Pelicans knew they couldn't draft a guy that had the um a chance to make this roster just because we don't have any roster spots. So I do like you know taking a guy that's a drafting stash guy, or you could have traded the pick away or something like that. So this is a good pick for them. A guy that's going to play in the summer league. Hopefully keeps developing overseas. Hopefully one day he can be something. If not, you didn't really waste too much draft capital on him. So we'll see how this turns out. But that'll wrap up the Pelicans draft, man. Excited to see this team in summer league. This is going to be a very, very good summer league team. And as always, just to boot tragedies, and I'm out. Hey, yo, click that subscribe button, man. Turn those notifications on, and you won't miss another video from the boot tragedies. This is what we live for. This is what we worked hard for. Okay, we ain't giving it up. We are not freaking giving this up. You got to freaking fight. You got to fight. Give me